Hello everyone, this is the lecture number 16 of the lecture series of Naval Architecture made for MEO examination. In this lecture, we will continue with the numerical integration with the help of a Simpson's rule. In the earlier lecture, we have discussed how to do the calculation for finding the moment of inertia centroid and area of the water plane above the transverse axis. In this lecture specifically we are going to discuss about the calculation of moment of inertia centroid of the water plane about the longitudinal axis we will call it as a center line of the ship. So I am looking the ship from the top view and this is the one of the water plane area. Let's try to understand the axis system. So you can see this is the, the x axis of the ship and this is the y axis of the ship. So this y axis of the ship we will call it as a transverse axis and we have done the calculation in our dear classes. And the x axis we will call it as a longitudinal axis. Also this is the center line of the ship about which about this line the ship is symmetric about this line ship is a symmetric now what we are going to do now I will take a one of the a small section of this water plane and I am going to draw the diagram here like this so I will let's call a uh, with some name A, B, C, D. Again, this is the a longitudinal axis or you can call it as a center line. So what I will do now, as we have done the calculation for the transverse axis, same thing we are going to do here, but with a little bit small changes. So I am taking now a, a one a strip the width of the strip is a dx and the height of this strip is a y. So what I am going to do now, I will calculate first the area of the strip. So area of the strip, area of the strip is y into dx as the strip is very small and it is considered as a rectangle. So if I ask what is the area of a full curve A, B, C, D? It will be summation of a y dx. Summation of a y dx. Then I want to take the moment. I want to take the first moment of a area about a BC about a BC that is a center line of the ship. So when you are going to take the first moment of an area you have to find out the area of the strip that is a y dx into the perpendicular distance from the BC. So what is the perpendicular distance here? Perpendicular distance means from the BC to the centroid of the this strip. So the centroid of the strip will be at y by 2. Why it is at y by 2? Because the height of the strip is y. As it is a rectangle, the centroid will be at half of the height. That is y by 2 from the BC. So if I take the first moment of this strip from the BC or from the center line, it will be y dx into y by 2. This is the first moment of the strip. If I ask find out the, the first moment of the area for the whole area, it will be again you can write like this summation of y square by 2 into dx. y square by 2 into dx. This is the first moment of a area of a whole uh, ABCD curve. Now if I ask find out the second moment of area, find out the second moment of area. So how to 
find the second moment of a area the second moment of area sm also called as a moment of inertia about bc means from the center line it will be it will be moment of inertia of the strip about its own neutral axis this is the neutral axis of the strip that is passing through the centroid of the strip so that is equal to i and a plus area of the strip into the perpendicular distance between the neutral axis and the, the longitudinal axis that is in this case i will call right now y so this is the a formula of a parallel axis theorem this is a formula called as a parallel axis theorem so if you want to find out the moment of inertia of this strip about the bc it will be you can call ibc is equal to i and a plus a y square y is the distance between the neutral axis and the bc so in this case that y is a y by 2 so let me write that whole thing here so ibc is equal to what is the moment of inertia of this strip as it is a rectangle so moment of inertia of this strip will be dx y cube by 12 plus area of the strip is y dx and y in this case the distance between the neutral axis and the bc is a y by 2 bracket square if you solve the whole thing it will come y cube by 3 dx y cube by 3 dx so if i ask the moment of inertia of the whole area a b c d about the bc you can write like this summation of a y cube by 3 dx so like this you can calculate the area of the full uh, a b c d first moment as well as a second moment okay let's summarize the uh, whole thing whatever the things we have seen just now so i am writing as a note here so this is the area a b c d and we have a strip here the height of the strip is a uh, y width of the strip is a dx the the distance of the uh, neutral axis from the bc is a y by 2 so total area of the whole a b c d will be summation of y dx first moment about the bc that is about the central line also you can call as about the longitudinal axis is a summation of a y square by 2 into dx second moment about the bc about the center line is a summation of a y cube by 3 dx these all the things you have to keep in your mind because when you are going to do the calculation this whole thing is a required okay let's start one numerical to understand how to do the calculation of the uh, area of the water plane location of the centroid calculation of the first moment as well as a calculation of the second moment of an area about the center line of the ship okay so let's have a look to this numerical the half ordinate of the water plane area 180 meter long are as follows so in this numerical they have given the half ordinates and the length of the water plane is a 180 meter length of the water plane is a 180 meter so okay so from the uh, numerical i have uh, drawn the water plane area is like this now these all are uh, half ordinates is given and the ship is going to symmetric about the the center line so this is the uh, center line of the ship the ship is symmetric about the center line so they have given the half ordinates so sections which is given here starting from the half perpendicular and ending with the forward perpendicular okay so you can see from the half perpendicular to the section number one half perpendicular to the section number one 
you have a three ordinates here you have a three ordinates here of perpendicular let's call this is a section number zero then section half and the section one the spacing between these three consecutive ordinate is a half is a half so i will call that spacing as a h by two h is the full spacing so in this case in the region one from the half perpendicular to the section number one the spacing is a h by two as it is a half spacing from the section one to the section number nine you can see the spacing between the each consecutive ordinate is a full 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. It is a full spacing. I can call that spacing as a H. Again from the 9 to forward perpendicular, if you see this is the third region where you will find the spacing between the each consecutive ordinate. Again it is a H by 2 as H is the full spacing. Okay, so like this there are three regions here and the spacing between the each consecutive ordinate we have found from the quotient. Now you can see the second row is there that is the half ordinates. For each section there will be some ordinates are given and that ordinate we are calling as a y0, y1.5, y1, y2 like this. So these all are ordinates given to the corresponding sections so first task is to find out how many ordinates are there how many ordinates are there that you have to find out from that we have to decide which rule is applicable here for solving the numerical so let's start the calculation here you have half perpendicular is your uh, zeroth ordinate then half section is there that is a second ordinate third four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we have a we have a total number of ordinates is a 13 irrespective of a spacing between the consecutive ordinates don't bother at this moment how much is the spacing between the each consecutive ordinates you have to see total number of ordinates that is a 13 so what is the the number of intervals will be 13 minus 1 it will be 12 13 minus 1 it will be 12 so now 12 is completely divisible by 3 as well as it is a completely divisible by 2 it means that you can use any of the rule from the Simpsons I am going to use the Simpsons first rule here so this is the water plane area looks like so now what I have done here you can see all the ordinates I have shown in a transverse view and you can see along the center line we have a sections so sections is starting from the half perpendicular I am calling right now half perpendicular as a zeroth section then we have a half section then you have a section number one from the section number one to nine the spacing is a full spacing that is H and from nine to the forward perpendicular again the spacing is a half so by looking the spacing I have divided the whole region into the three different region so first region is uh, starting from the section 0 that is half perpendicular to the section 1 that is the first region you can see here then from 1 to 9 this is the second region and from 9 to forward perpendicular it is a third region now you can see the section number 1 is a common between the region 1 and the region 2. Section number 9 is a common between the region 2 and the region 3. It means that the Simpsons multiplier will also a common between or you are going to combine the Simpsons multiplier which is coming from the region 1 and from the region 2 you have to combine for the section number 1 same thing you have to do here 
the simpson's multiplier which is coming for the section number 9 from the region 2 and from the region 3 you have to combine let's start the calculation of the simpson's multiplier so you can see i have done the calculation of the simpson's multiplier for the individual region and at the end i have done the calculation for the combined region of a1 a2 and a3 you can see here uh, for the region 1 as it is a half spacing we are uh, writing the simpson's multiplier is a half 1 by 2 4 by 2 and 1 by 2 then the coming to the region number 2 the simpson's multiplier will be like this 1 4 2 4 2 4 2 4 1 then for the region 3 the simpson's multiplier will be 1 by 2 4 by 2 1 by 2 then region uh, section number 1 is a common between the region 1 and the region 2 you have to combine these two simpson's multiplier same thing applicable here also so this is the final simpson's multiplier for the whole region So what we have done, we have done the calculation of the Simpson's multiplier. Now we will do the calculation for finding the moment of inertia about the central line. What we have seen the moment of inertia, moment of inertia about the central line, also called as second moment of area about the central line, that is summation of y cube by 3 dx what you have understood from here what you have understood from here you have to simpsonize y cube dx you have to simpsonize y cube dx then whatever the answer is coming you have to divide by 3 ok so what is the final formula for the uh, second moment of area so the final formula will be for the Simpson, Simpson's multiplier there will be h by 3 this is a Simpson's size h by 3 then by 3 is there that I am writing like this by 3 into summation of a y cube dx summation of a y cube dx summation of a y cube dx it means that you have to Simpsonize a y cube dx not y dx it is a y cube dx now what is a y y is the ordinates y is the ordinates now in this numerical they have given the half ordinates they have given the half ordinate but but they are asking the question for the full water plane area so at the end you have to multiply with the 2 for the full expression so this is the a final expression for the calculation of the second moment of area of the water plane about the central line 2h by 3 into 1 by 3 into summation of a y cube dx now let's have a look here for creating the table so this section is i will call as a column number one half ordinates that we will call as a y the column number two then we need a y cube that's the reason what i am doing now whatever the column number 2 is there that is a y I need a y cube I will call that column number 3 then we need to Simpsonize a y cube that's the reason we need to create the Simpsons multiplier column here and that discussion already we have done that is a column number 4 and column number 5 is a column number 3 multiplied by column number 4 so you if you do all the calculation you will come to know that this is your summation of a y cube dx take this value substitute here now only thing is left about h now how to find the value of a h h is the total length of a water plane divided by divided by number of a full spacing interval in this case it is a around 10 so h will be so h is a 18 meter so you have all the values here h is there summation of y cube dx you already got from here substitute here 
and that expression is came here 2 by 9 into h h is the 18 and summation of y cube dx is this value which you got from the table if you substitute here you will get the final answer and this is the, the second moment of area of the water plane about the center line i hope everything is a clear so we will see now the application of uh, this simpson's rule for the tank top of the double bottom so let's have one uh, one more numerical for the understanding purpose a double bottom tank 21 meter long 21 meter long has a watertight center girder the width of the tank top measured from the center line to the ship's side r so so you can see this diagram this is the a center girder and this is the ship's side again this is the top view of the tank top i am looking from the top to the tank top of the double bottom and this is the ship's side this is the center line the whatever the values they have given here is measure from the center line to the ship's side so you can see the first ordinate is given that is a 10 meter then 9.5 meter 9 8 6.5 4 1 meter calculate the second moment of area of the tank top about the longitudinal axis through its centroid what they are asking now what they are asking they are asking find out the moment of inertia also called as second moment of area of this tank top surface about the longitudinal axis passing through its centroid now you have to consider this part only for the one side of the ship only they are talking about only one side they are not talking anything about uh, there will be a mirror image on the left side so they are talking only about this side only so for this area there will be a centroid it is a passing somewhere here and that is along the center girl so this for example consider somewhere here it is a centroid is there and this is the a longitudinal axis longitudinal axis passing through the centroid passing through the centroid so this is the you can call as a centroid so they are asking find out the second moment of area about the longitudinal axis passing through the centroid so this is again the problem related to the the center line only okay so let's start the numerical start the numerical so the first column which is given that is a width of the uh, tank top that width i will call as a y column number one then that width we have written like this 10 9.5 9 8 6.5 4 1 so first of all check how many uh, ordinates are there that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there are 7 ordinates 7 minus 1 it will be 6 so the 6 is a uh, number of intervals is a 6 so you can use simpson's first rule as well as the second rule because the number of intervals is completely divisible by 2 as well as a 3 so in this case i am going to use a simpson's multiplier uh, with the help of a Simpson first rule that is 1 4 2 4 2 4 1 as here there is no nothing is mentioned about uh, whether it is a half spacing or the full spacing we are going to consider as a full spacing so Simpson's multiplier for the full region will be 1 4 2 4 2 4 1 so first uh, the column number this is a column number 2 column number 3 is column number 3 is product of area so that is a y into dx so for that purpose you can column number 3 you will get a column number 1 multiplied by column number 2 so if you do the column number 1 multiplied by column number 2 you will get these all the values 
at the end you will do the algebraic summation and that algebraic summation is a summation of a y dx summation of a y dx so what is the formula to calculate the area actual area is a h by 3 this h by 3 is related to the simpson's rule into summation of a y dx which we have done here h by 3 into summation of y dx we will see how much will be the h let's finish all the things then we will discuss about the h h is the common interval or the spacing between the each consecutive ordinates we will see that then we will move for the, the first movement for the first movement so what is the uh, formula for the calculation of the first movement that also we have already derived first movement is summation of a y square by 2 into dx it means that we have to simpsonize y square we have to simpsonize y square it means that we need to create one more column that is a y square column ordinate square so we have a y here we have to create one more column that is a column number 4 that is a y square so like uh, 10 square is 100 9.5 square 90.25 like this we have to create a y square column then we have to simpsonize y square that's the reason we are taking again simpsons multiplier 1 4 2 4 2 4 1 that is a column number 5 so column number 6 that is a the multiplication of the column number 4 and column number 5 why we are doing this this is a we are simpsonizing the y square so if you do this 100 multiplied by 1 you will get the 190.25 multiplied by 4 it will be 361 like this you have to do the multiplication of the column number 4 and the column number 5 you will get the column number 6 at the end you have to do the algebraic summation of this you will get the summation of a y square dx now the summation of y square dx is your first a function of a first moment this is a function of the first moment if you want actual first moment you have to simpsonize it again it will be h by 3 into summation of a y square dx so you have to substitute this value here you will get multiply by h by 3 you will get the actual first moment now coming to the actual second moment the formula for the actual second moment that is h by 3 into summation of a y cube dx it means that you have to find out the y cube dx summation of y cube dx for that purpose we need to create one more column that is for a y cube that is for the y cube that is again the ordinate cube so like this you have to create one more column that is a column number 7 that is a y cube so you have to simpsonize a y cube for that purpose we have to uh, uh, create one more column that is simpsons multiplier i will call column number 8 column number 8 now to get a y cube dx we have to create one more column that is column number 9 that is column number 7 into column number 8 like this you have to create one more column here and do the algebraic summation of that that is summation of a y cube dx take that value substitute here multiply by h by 3 why because we have to simpsonize it h by 3 you will get the actual second moment so when you are doing the calculation for the actual area actual first moment and the actual second moment as well as the centroid we need to use these formulas and the formula is, uh, is as follows the actual area is h by 3 into summation of y dx and that summation of y dx we have done the calculation over here that value you have to substitute here the actual first moment calculation will be h by 3 into 1 by 2 why this 1 by 2 is coming because in the formula when which we have derived that is the function first moment is a y square by 2 into dx but when we have done the simpsonization here we have simpsonized y square dx we have not yet considered by 2 so that by 2 you have to consider here 1 by 2 is here and summation of y square dx you are getting from here so you will get the actual first moment 
for the actual second moment simpsonization h by 3 is there into 1 by 3 we are taking here why we are taking 1 by 3 because in second moment you have a y cube by 3 but when we have done the calculation for the simpsons rule or this uh, this uh, table a uh, table thing which we have created we have taken y cube dx we have not considered by 3 so that by 3 we have to consider here that is 1 by 3 so h by 3 is a simpsons uh, a rule and 1 by 3 into y cube dx that you will get from here so like this you will get the actual area actual first moment actual second moment now for calculation of the centroid for the calculation of the centroid you will have actual first moment divided by actual area so you have the formula of the actual first moment is this this divided by you have an actual area if you see in both the formulas h by 3 is a common so that will be get cancelled the final thing will be left that is summation of y square dx divided by 2 into summation of y dx like this you can calculate the centroidal location of the tank top surface in the all formulas we have seen uh, there is a term h and that h is called as a common interval and how to calculate the common interval common interval h is equal to the total length that is a 21 in this case divided by number of intervals that is a 6 that already we have done the calculation so value of h is coming 3.5 now area of the tank top surface that already we have seen the formula h by 3 into h by 3 into summation of y dx that already we got here h is a 3.5 divided by 3 you will get the area of the tank top surface now calculation of the centroid from the central line we have got the answer for the centroid is like this summation of y square dx divided by 2 into summation of y dx this y square dx we have done the calculation y dx divided by 2 you will get the location of the centroid from the central line what is the meaning of this if you have seen that area it was look like this so for the centroidal location somewhere here and this is the line passing through the centroid this is the central girder and this distance that we got now 4.018 meter so this is the location of the center now second moment of area about the central line the formula was like this h by 3 into 1 by 9 into summation of a y cube dx so y cube dx already we got that is 8741.8 h by 3 h by 3 into 1 by 3 that is 3 multiplied by 3 it is coming 9 here so it is h by 9 into summation of y cube dx you got the values this much now from the table whatever the moment of inertia or the second moment of area which we got that is about the central line but we need the moment of inertia about the about the line passing through the centroid this line so we need to use the parallel axis theorem so parallel axis theorem will be like this i centroid is equal to i center line which we got minus a x square that is this gap so the calculation which we have done here that is the second moment of area about the center line second moment of area about the center line means this one that is your you can call as a moment of inertia about the center line but we need the moment of inertia about the centroid or the line passing through the centroid so this is that line so these both the lines are parallel to each other so we can use the parallel axis theorem so parallel axis theorem will be like this i centroid is equal to i center line minus a x square 
A is the area. A is the area of this plane. X is the distance between these two parallel lines. That is 4.018. I center line we have got here. Then you will get the I centroid. So like this I centroid is 3400 minus area into X square. So like this you will get the second moment of area about the centroid also called as a moment of inertia about the centroid.